post there in the spots, parking lot. I recommend I one if you're looking at it. Yeah, yeah, I saw some, what the hell are they riding? That's fast. Time to use my lock for the first time ever. Oh my God, this is so exciting. I know, thank you. Uh, you have it on camera, all of it. I know. Yeah, it's Let's watch my bike be stolen when we get back. Best part ever. <laughs> oh, look how convenient. Oh, so easy. Yeah? Oh. Yeah. oh. Okay, now hopefully it works. Brandon, you think that chain is big enough? No. <laughs> so good, so versatile. You can walk this thing like fucking anywhere. And Ryan, he's just. Life. That's good enough. <laughs> oh, you got a little, a little. <laughs> okay, yeah. This is <laughs> with it on it. The most expensive bike here. <laughs> I got a lot of trust in the system, guys. Just barely. Huh. This wasn't part of the plan, but I get some grease too while I'm at it. Okay, so I got a new lock with the intention of replacing this one. Now I did just buy this one and this is everyone's favorite kind of lock because it's a chain and it's like 3.3 feet long. It even has a covered little plug here so that way dirt doesn't get in the keyhole. And I'm fully aware that in terms of security this kind of lock is actually the best. The chains are the most difficult although not impossible to cut. So to a lot of people, this um, wire kind of lock might seem like a big downgrade. And I'm sure a lot of you guys right now are in the middle of writing very mean comments. But there's a good reason why I'm quote unquote downgrading to this lock instead. So even though this chain kind of lock is the best, and I am pretty happy with it, there's two major flaws with it. The first is that it's only 3.3 feet long. So when I first pulled up here, I wanted to lock my bike over there, but I simply couldn't. This wasn't long enough. So that's the first downside. And the second one is that it's very heavy because it's a thick, heavy duty chain. So if I got a longer version of this, it would have been that much heavier. And when it comes to e-bikes, weight is basically everything. So now this new lock is about twice as long as this and about half the weight. And I would say in terms of security, it's about 90% as secure as this one, because if somebody has bolt cutters and they want your bike, they can cut through either of these locks. And much like that lock, this one also has a cover for the keyhole, which in my opinion is a must have feature. Oh yeah, not to mention because this is a chain, it's actually pretty loud when I'm riding around. Now I also just impulsively bought this lube and my intention is to put it on the, uh, the shocks here. Okay, maybe that was not a good idea, but now I'm committed. Now this is not WD-40, this is um, like an actual lube, so it's made for stuff like this, I think. A lot of you guys made fun of me in my last video for using WD-40 on the bike, and oh uh, no, I overshot. But I want to say, I only use WD-40 on the metal parts, not on the plastic. Oh man, I'm making a mess here. It's okay though. It's just lube or grease. Okay, well now my hands are covered in grease. But in theory now, the front shocks, oh yeah, oh, so much better. I'm tempted to put some grease on this, but based off of how that came out, I might, eh, I'm gonna try. I'll put on my finger first, put a very small amount on this. 
Ugh. Okay, I am just making a mess here. There we go. Just gonna wipe my hands in the dirt, clean them off a little bit. Just test out the rear shock. Oh, like butter. All right, now since I made a mess, let's get out of here. And something I do want to quickly point out about the lock, because I know you guys are going to make fun of me about this, the battery is the single most valuable piece of equipment on the bike, and at least the way I have it set up here, my battery is only held on by this very thin wire. That was simply the best I could do when it comes to the security of my battery. So even with this heavy duty chain, it doesn't really add any extra protection to my battery because it's not the weakest link. So I don't know, I feel good about the upgraded chain. It's very lightweight, it's not gonna make all this noise when riding around, and it's a bit longer, so I can actually use it in more situations. Okay, but there is another topic I wanted to discuss with you guys in this video, and that's now since my bike is pretty much complete, check out my last video because I went over the final little upgrades I did to my bike, and now my custom build is essentially done. So with the building process behind me, the question is, do I regret building my own e-bike versus just buying one? Because two of my friends also have e-bikes and they both bought one. So one has an Onyx RCR and the other bought an Aerial Rider X-Class. And they're both really epic bikes. And in comparison to them, my bike is kind of well let's just say DIY but there are some key advantages to a DIY build the first thing that I like the most is that it's unique there's no other bike on the planet that's exactly like this or probably even close to what I did here this is kind of a Frankenstein and I do love it in its own special unique kind of a way so if you're the kind of person that enjoys that then a DIY bike is gonna have that as a huge pro for you another thing is the tinkering with the bike. With a DIY bike, you're constantly tinkering and upgrading it. My friend that picked up an Onyx about four months ago, he has yet to make any kind of major investments or upgrades into his bike because he really doesn't need to, and thus he hasn't spent really any more money on it. And finally, if you want to look at it through the lens of economics, all in, my bike is roughly the same cost as an Aerial Rider X-Class. It doesn't have the same polish, as I mentioned, it looks kind of janky in comparison to my friend's X-Class, but when it comes to the performance, my bike is significantly better. Not gonna lie, a big piece of me just wishes that from day one I picked up a Suron. I'm gonna go this way. Oh. And even aside from the power and the epic suspension of the Suron, one of the things that I'm envious of in comparison to my bike is just the integration of the battery. The battery slides in perfectly, there's a nice key that locks it into place. And as you guys saw in the beginning of this video, my battery is just placed on my bike frame and it has that very thin wire that kind of locks it to my bike. Now maybe I am being a bit too finicky here, the difference really isn't that massive, and you have to keep in mind the Suron is significantly more expensive than what I have right here. So I don't know which is best, I could be suffering from a case of the grass is greener on the other side, because I've never personally had a pre-built system, but if I can go back in time to last summer when I built this bike, I don't know if I would build the same bike again or buy a Suron. I really am split on the whole topic. 